ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله الحمد لله we are in our complete arabic course or class we are in master letters at this point we are dealing on in our syllabus with hawas we've done abjad last week and previous to that we did all the sifat of the letters so i have a question for everybody here see because what happens is as i teach you as you learn now i have to test you my test is always in ongoing throughout the class so i'm going to be asking you things that you should know if you don't know it goes back to that rule i said before people say oh the teachers they're holding back they're not wanting to give us information they keep us going the same thing over and over again no it's only because we can't go forward until you master what we are supposed to be at because the the the, the next part of the lesson is established and built upon a foundation of previously learned things objectives okay so your learning objective today is only going to be strengthened if you paid attention to 3 weeks ago's lesson when we dealt with what were the sifat we spent 2 weeks on the sifat right we spent what the sifat were of opposites and we spent time with the sifat that were not opposites okay so who can tell me name just anybody raise your hand and name 3 sifat that are opposites need that when i say the opposite that have an opposite name and i told you guys you were supposed to know them all but i'm just asking somebody name 3 or somebody name 1 yes hamsun what's his what's his opposite jahrun okay what does hamsun mean whispering hams is whispering what does jahrun mean loud. loud someone give me another one i saw your hand up what give me one yes sir shidda or shadda you can say either one what does that mean strength it means strength this is shidda right give me its opposite rikhwun or rikhwa that's good rikhawa either one of those it's not we're not going to be stuck on stupid we're not on such a rigid mindset okay what we're we're learning here is how to think we're learning how to think how to see because i recognize what i was thinking before i came to class i don't mean that way but how how we think as an arab okay well i'm not arab but no but we have to think in arabic because the quran the revelation and that's our objective right So we're going to keep that in mind. And reason why I say that is cuz you can say rikhun, you can say rikhawa, you can say rikhwa. Because what's there that you know is the same root which means weakness. The rakhawa, ra kha wa together means weakness. Okay? Or denotes to and what does that mean? Is the word is spilling all over our mouth like kha. You understand? It's spilling over as opposed to something that's not spilling all over our mouth. like id dal it doesn't have that rikhab it has that shidda okay so we start thinking like this based on principles that we learn and we're not just saying something in the abstract there is a point with this cuz now we're going to three new letters today hawaza right ha wa za and if we're going to know these letters and if we're going to learn tajweed And if we're going to learn anything we need to know these letters. So <clears throat> someone gets two, I want a third one. Someone give me a third letter, a third sifat, a descriptive sound or de- characteristic that is tied to the letters that has an opposite. Yes, I saw you with your hand. I only learned the first page. Okay. Well, that's just two. There on the first page there was six at least. Okay, five. Well, there's two. There's three more left. He said two and he said two. Let's hear one. That one is neutral. It doesn't have an opposite. What is it? It's tawassut. Tawassut. Jazakumullah khair. That is important. Tawassut is very unique. It's unique because it doesn't have it's it is a third point. If you have shidda and if you have rikhawa, in between shidda and rikhawa, strength and weakness, you have tawassut and tawassut is moderation right moderation. right moderately okay so somebody now give me one of the sifat that doesn't have an opposite yes sir 
Tafashi. Okay, Tafashi is in only one letter in the whole alphabet. What letter is that? Sheen. Everybody say ish. You're going to sit, you have to open your mouth. Ish. Ish. I mean, we, we got to get over our, our, our shyness or our little, you know, so that it can come out. Ish. This is the sound we make when we're moving around with the goats. This is the sound we make when we're dealing with camels. We say ish, 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 ish. That's the sound. The same sound. You get to practice it a lot. Okay? Ish. Some of us remember that, huh? <laughs> I saw you go, oh, ish, ish. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. You had goats? Yeah. You had to, okay, Alhamdulillah. You used to say ish, ish to them? Yeah. Alhamdulillah. That's, that's definitely where you first start using that sound when you're growing up dealing with your goats and stuff like that. They seem to respond to that sound. Okay, give me another one. Hold it. Let me, before we go, tafashi, again, is a spilling. It's, it's the pushing of that air through the teeth. Okay, because now the teeth, Siba Way and different ones like them, they describe this sound as the teeth being combs and the sound coming through the combs of those teeth, right? You see when they comb, they call those things teeth right there, and that's where that sound comes from. Someone give me another one. Itbaq. Okay, but itbaq has an opposite. Is that opposite of the No. Alhamdulillah, you have a beautiful question. His question is, is itbaq a sifat? Yes, itbaq is a sifat. It's a description. Is it a sifat that has an opposite? Yes, it has an opposite. Okay? Is it the opposite of tafashi? No, it is not the opposite of tafashi. Itbaq is to, clo I call it closed mouth. But it's really not closing your mouth and, and articulating. It's making your mouth round, all, like that. Making your mouth like that. So when you say ta, ta, or ba, ba, you make your mouth round. Can't be lazy tongued or lazy lipped in Arabic. I'm, of course, I'm exaggerating slightly just so you can see exactly how it goes. You know, they say, read my lips, no more taxes, or stuff like that. Ba, <laughs> ba. You see, my mouth goes all, all, like that. The opposite of it is fat, which is opening. Everybody say, eh, eh, eh. My teacher, I saw, I met one of my teachers from, of Tajweed, Sheikh um, Muhammad al Farooq, Hafizullah. He's in the United States now, alhamdulillah. And he saw me, and he, I was reciting some Quran to him, and he said, what's wrong? You, you, you forgot to open your mouth? Every time you see a letter that has fat in it, you have to open your mouth. Too much English. You're not moving your mouth enough. And I laugh. He's right. Most English people, we don't move. What's up? So, what's up going on? Yeah, what's up? <laughs> Talk out the side of our mouth. We really do. You work, yo, what's up? You see a door? No. Easy. All right? Open your mouth. Say, eh. eh. Now say, thaw. Thaw. Raw. Raw. Share. Share. You see the difference? You should be able to hear the difference. Sa. 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 You see the difference? Do you hear the difference? No. One has it back and one has fat. Fat is opening your mouth like a doorway. It back is making it oblong, oval like an egg on its side. All. Oh. Like you say raw. And in, in, well, except in Warsh sometimes, in Warsh, we say re, 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 and we do it in fat. But that's a rule that we'll learn later on, okay? But for now, just know that it's supposed to be raw, raw. saw, saw. that's it back. In fat is a, e, ba, e, da, e, ja, e, okay? That's opening up your mouth. Everybody got that? Now, moving right along. We're going to go to Atini Aklami. Moving right along, we're going to go to Hawaza. Somebody, you have your papers. Give me some more, Ayub. We have some letters in front of you, a handout that you have. These no, Atini folk. These handouts are not given to you so that you can just just compose a, a whole bunch of, of papers in your house so the mice can eat it or anything like that. 
These papers are for you to go home and study them and organize them. Read your syllabus. If you don't have a syllabus, see Mr. Hakim. He will give you a syllabus. In the syllabus, it says part of your lesson here is that I inspect your book. I inspect your paperwork because everybody here is supposed to each one what? Teach one. Everybody's supposed to go and teach somebody. I mean, we're not being rhetorical. We're being real, even if it is your classmate. Even if Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he taught the Qur'an to how many of the Sahaba? Ubay ibn Ka'b taught the Qur'an to ibn Abbas. And he learned it from the Prophet sallallahu And still ibn Abbas went and learned it from Umar ibn Khattab, who learned it from the Prophet sallallahu So even these were Sahaba, they were learning the Qur'an from each other. And then they went to Zayd ibn Harith to learn Qur'an. I'm talking about Sahaba. So you can learn from each other, from each other's you know, classmates. It's no big deal. It's even better. It'll strengthen your understanding. But you're not to learn and not teach. Okay, because teaching is one of those things, like any other sadaqah, the more you give away, the more you get. The more you teach, the more you learn. The more you know your science. So I'm giving you these papers because I want you guys to memorize these things, to write your notes on these things, and then to use these as outlines to teach the next person. Okay? Pass it on. That's what these papers are for. It's an outline so that we can all be on the same sheet of proverbial music. Okay? So now, I don't have to write anything, actually. We have it, on the, we have it in, in the thing. Someone recite to me, how was? King how was? Hurts a hurdle that we see with Hather. Come on, I don't have the paper with me. You guys have it. Start to swell. Go to well. I'm gonna put. The, I'm gonna recite this before we put it on the board, so at least you're familiar with it. Wow! Wow! wow. wow wound the makhruj can be found. Come on! I hate hesi hesitation. Come on! We're not dull people, are we? You can read in English. Go get that. Go to the next one, Zay. Zayun. Zayun is the seventh sign, a mystery that rocks the mind. Safirun Sumtun. Zayun's from? As inside us, they buzz away. Right after end, or right at the end, right? Okay, now let's put it on the board and let's go over it so we can explain it piece by piece. And we're going to throw it up there and we're going to come back down. What you will note, there are a few things that you note in each one of these classes. I'm sorry. Um, the first one is what? What are we doing? It says what? With Bismillah and Alhamdulillah, the blessings on the Prophet, I'll have my say with you today concerning? Descriptions. We're going to find a description of the word, right? A description of the letter, right? Descriptions of the numerals, the points of articulation, which is tajweed, right? And the makhraj, right? And what did I say also that you're going to find in here? Some words. You're going to find some words in English that are very similar to or exactly with the same makhraj and sifat description as the Arabic words. And this is going to yu'inuna. This is going to help us to learn how to properly articulate these letters, these sounds in the Arabic language. Okay, and this is nothing that we should just fluff off because remember, the, 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 one of the biggest things that's been holding this Western Ummah down is the lack of true, take your hands out your mouth, of true scholardom, okay, excellence in their study habits. And so that we can learn, and the first thing you have to start off is with the alphabet. And once we get that, then we can go on to the next step and the next step. And then it starts to snowball down a mountain. And you know you roll a rock down a hill in a mountain and it's snow, it's going to become a big old avalanche. Everything starts to click. Because Islam, there's no schizophrenia. There's no schizophrenia. There's no schizophrenia in Islam. All of it connects. 
All right, so let's look for those things in the poem. Throw the poem on the board, please. La ijlis mustaqim. There you go, shukran. It says King Hawaz. How many kings were there? Six kings. Anybody who wants to find out, I was just looking at it um, today. You know, Ibn, Ibn Astaghfirullah. Sheikh Muqbir, rahimahullah, he wrote the taqrid, he wrote the introduction to one of his students' books who wrote a book about these six kings and the other two and how the alphabet came about. Everybody knows Sheikh Muqbir was a very famous sheikh in Yemen, very meticulous, rahimahullah, astaghfirullah, ladim, rahimahullah, for his, his meticulous in extracting the weak hadith from the, the true hadith. Okay? And so the fact that he wrote the introduction to the book from which we get a lot of this information is very vital for people to understand. Okay? Now, King Hawaz was one of the kings. All right? From his name, we have three letters. What are the three letters that we get from his name? Just looking at his name. What are the three letters that we get? How, ha, wa, and ze. Ha, wa, and ze. Now, ha is an interesting letter that we must take pure note at. It, it, meticulous note at because in English there is only one H sound if we want to correlate this to an English letter it would correlate to the letter H everybody know H? H in Spanish right? so H in English there is only one symbol or grapheme that denotes the H letter however just like Arabic English has two H sounds doesn't it? We have the sound when you say jalapeno. Even though it's written with a J, it's an H sound. And it's a hard H sound. Then we have hot. We have hat. We have happy. That is a hard H sound. And then we have heavy. Health. Ho, ho, ho. And hurt. And hurdle. And heart. And this is a soft H sound that is directly the exact same sound at, that is denoted by this letter, ha, in Arabic. Okay? The, uh, I'm sorry. Now, this is directly related to this ha that we're referring to right here. Okay? This is the soft. Everybody say, heavy. heavy. If you hear it, now take, if you sit up straight and you say, heavy, heavy. you'll feel the ha coming up. If you say, health. You feel it coming from yourself. Say hurt. hurt. And you say heart. heart. Now everybody say hot. hot. You see it comes from your back, your, your, the up, upper part of your throat, right? The back of your throat, right here. Whereas the hair, everybody say hair. It comes from deeper. Okay? It's coming from inside your throat. You have your, your esophagus, this whole place right here. And then you have your mouth. Okay? At the top of your mouth, in the back, right here, say ha. Hot. Say hot. Say, uh, Rahim. That's the ha that we're not talking about. Now everybody say, ha. 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 It's in here. Say, health. health. Heavy. 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 Hurt. Hurt. Hurdle. Hurt. Just say it normally. And that's the ha that we're referring to. Everybody with me? So now, what is written here, the H that you notice here are the H in English that correspond and directly relate to the ha of Arabic. So these words are here so you can practice saying this, the words that you already recognize, sounds that you already know, but now let recognize that this is the ha sound that we're referring to when we say ha. Is everybody with me? Okay, so it starts off and says, Hurts a hurdle that we see with ha, the fifth in history. What does it mean when he say that? He says, ha, the fifth in history. What does that mean? Ha is, the numeric value of ha is what? Five. That's the first thing that we know. The whole rest of the line is just, it's true, it's not a lie. Hurt is a hurdle that we have to deal with, that we have to see. And with ha, as we deal and look back in our history, someone's always been hurt. But the real point with this is that hurt, hurdle, and history all sound just like and use it, that sound, ha. Huh. That's the point. Everybody with me? Okay, anybody have a question about that? Anybody disagree? Sir, yes, sir. What hurdle means? Hurdle. Hurdle, alhamdulillah. Hurdle is one of those guys, what's that guy's name? Um, the black guy was skinny, jumping over the thing. Jesse Owens, okay? Jazakallah <laughs> khair. 
<laughs> huh? Anyway, you know, they run the, the race and they jump over the thing. And those things that they jump over on the track is called, are called hurdles. Hurdle, in, in linguistically though, a hurdle is any uh, um, obstacle in your path that you have to get around. Over, under, or around. Okay, so when he says hurt's a hurdle, hurt is something that we got to get over, right? We got to get over hurt when you deal with it in life. However, not being so poetic, it's just means he's using just words he put together so that you can learn how to say hey, and recognize that in English you say hurdle, right? And that's the same hey that you need to say when you say use hey anywhere else in the Arabic language. Mafish, kapish. Okay. <clears throat> so first line we learn that. Ha is number five, and in the history of the letters, five is ha. Next, we say, it's from the throat, the deepest part. Now, we're learning the makhraj. What are we learning here? Makhraj. What does makhraj mean? Ya ayyuha nas. Yell it out, man. Point it's the point of articulation. Remember, this is your test. When I'm asking you this, you should know this. The makhraj is the point of articulation. Now, what does that mean? That's where the sound is born. That's where the sound comes out. That's where it is enunciated. That's where it pops off. Okay? That exact point. Now, it says it's from the throat, the deepest part. Now, how do we know this? Is there a hadith? Is it in the Quran? Because some people say, no, I'm not going to take it unless it's from the Quran and the Sunnah. However, as Ibn Uthaymeen, rahimahullah, said, we followed it. We snuck up on the language and followed it piece by piece. Noticing everything as through investigation that we found this out. And Islam does not reject science. Islam does not reject investigation as long as it doesn't go against Quran and Hadith. So we have the famous poem from, it says, uh, yani, from Al Jazari, where he says, Hamzun Fahaun, Hamzun. Hamzun fahaun thumma aynun haun. Muhmalatani thumma gaynun khaun. So he tells you where the letters sounds are coming from. He says, Hamza, if you want to follow the letters as they come up your throat, this is your head. Okay? Can you get this? This is the head of the person, this is his mouth. He says, Hamza fahaun thumma aynun haun. Muhmalatani means they don't have anything on it. Muhammadani means they don't have a, a, a dot, a diacritical mark on it. Thumma gaynun khaun. They do have diacritical marks. So at the back of your throat, you have kha. Everybody say kha. Now everybody say gha. Now everybody say eh. That's down deeper. Now say ha. Now say ah. Now say ha. You see, it's coming up the throat. Each sound comes up. So he says, Hamza fahaun thumma aynun haun muhmalatani thumma gaynun khaun. So it comes out your mouth. Till we can go through all the letters till we get to ba. Right? And ba what? Flies off the lips. Okay? It's just a, something that you become familiar with. So he's showing you that ha is from the throat. It's a throat letter. What part of the throat? The deepest part. We feel it most? Heart. Now say heart. 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 You can feel it, can't you? Heart. Everybody say heart. heart. You can feel it coming up to explode out your mouth. So, roll it up. With Hamsun Rikhwun Istifal, the hair comes out and starts to swell. With Fathun Samtun, has complete. Just add idhar for her to speak. Let's leave that last part off. Just add idhar for her to speak. And let's talk about what we have here. Remember, remember that I said that these letters are stair-stepped, right? One is based on the, 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 the past lesson. And previously we've learned the sifat, right? So now this is just a review, a constant review and familiarization till we get so comfortable past familiarization till we know the sifat. Because each letter has different sifat and each week we're dealing with different sifat as it regards to those different letters. So here he says with hamsun. What is hamsun? Naam. Tafadl, tafadl. Sorry. Ayyub, idhab ma'ahu ilayhi al-hamam. Naam? 
sound. It's a whispering. So hair has a whispering sound. So, so what do? Think about that. Don't just say it has a whispering sound. Dig it. You sit there for a second and say, what does it mean for her to have a whispering sound? Then say, her. Yeah. Say, eh. Yeah. You hear that? You can't stop it. That's what it means. No. Once you start it, you can't stop it. If you try to stop it, it still whispers. Say, eh. Yeah. You see that? It comes out. That's what it means when it says, hamsun. Understand that. Don't just say it whispers. Somebody gonna say, yo, Jack, what you talking about? What do you mean it whispers? Whispers? Yeah, it whispers. And then you give them example. Mirabbi. Say mirabbi. And, and when you want to say mirabbihi, but since in, in the Quran we stop on a sukun, we don't stop on a mutaharrik, or a word that moves. So we say mirabbi. You hear that? Bih. That ha is at the end, and it whispers. Then it says, Rikhwun. What is Rikhwun? Weakness. Weakness. What are we talking about again? Not, not just say these sounds. What does it mean? When Hamsun is coming, it's already it's coming that it's, it's already out. Yeah, when, when Hamsun comes, I mean, when her comes, it's weak. You can't control it. What does it mean? Does it mean like it's soft? Yo, oh boy, he's weak. He's soft. Nah, it means that you can't control it. It's just too, it just goes all over the place. It doesn't hold to a form. Like it's opposite. Give me a letter with opposite. Del. Id. Say it. You see, that's strong. You control it. Ib. You control it. Right? But eh. Once you commit to it, it's there. It's too weak. You can't hold it. Everybody got me? Next. Istifel. What is istifel? Okay, low. That means this is telling you a position. The first two are telling you kefia, how it's coming. The next letter, the next description is telling you how, where, I mean, where your tongue is going to be. Is your gonna, tongue going to be up? Your tongue is not going to be up. Say, eh. eh. Your tongue is flat. Now, raise it up and say, eh. eh. Is that the sound you're looking for? No. So you have to keep your tongue what? Low, flat. Okay? Now it says the hair comes out and starts to swell. The reason why it says the hair comes out and starts to swell is because that's just the beginning. That's just the tip of the iceberg. If you don't bring the rest of the sifat, you ain't got it. What are the rest of the sifat? These two other sifat that come along are very key. The first one is fethun. What is fethun? You got to open your mouth. And then you have to have somethun. What? What is somethun? You gotta have some type of control. You got, you're still gonna have to try to retain it and uh, con control it somewhat. You just can't say, eh. No, you say, eh. And you hold it as it comes out. You know? After it spills, then you gain control again, because you might have to go to another sound. You understand? So you just don't let it spill all over the place because it's weak. After it comes out, after you hear enough of the sound, then you, you control it. Do you understand that? Now think about that. With Hamsun Rikhwun Istifal, the hair comes out and starts to swell. With Fethun Samtun, has complete. Just add Idha for hair to. Now what does that mean? Idha is the Tajweed rule. Now this is not Tajweed class, so we're not here to study what the words of Tajweed and all the terminologies are. But here is a class that we're going to get familiar with it so that when you go to Tejweed class, you'll be able to be ready. Okay, so when the teacher says, what's the Tejweed rule for her, you won't be like, well, I don't know, you know, and start crying and everything and feel a whole bunch of pressure. You'll be like, well, even if you don't remember, when they remind you, now you say, okay, I got that. Yeah, I heard that before. Okay? And then they can go into it. Idhar means clear. You know, it's a sound that, that is clear. There's all the letters in the throat that we spoke about. These are the six letters of the hulk. These are the six letters of the throat. They're all idhar. All of those are idhar as a characteristic, as a tajweed rule for them. Okay? And there's more to it when we get the sarf, the, the letters of halki. They all come back again. And you say, wow, this is dealing with sarf. This is dealing with tajweed. And you become so much, you step on it so many times, it's impossible for you to forget. Okay? It's impossible because just like in Tajweed, the letters of the Hulk have a certain rule. Just like in Surf, they have a certain rule. Okay? That's particular to them. 
So we'll learn that when we get there. But basically what it means is when you speak with idhar, I mean, when, you, when you use idhar to talk with or recite with, it has to have idhar. Okay, and we'll get to that some other time. Let's go on. Do I have any other questions about ha? Moving right along, we're going to the next letter. Ha, wa, za. The next letter's name is wow. I wrote it wow, W-O-W. Why did I do that? Because that's how it sounds. Is Arabic an English or Roman scripted letter language? No. So who cares what it's written like in, in the Roman script? And people have to recognize that's what we're using here. We're using the Roman script. Okay, that's what you do use in English. This is a part, a part and parcel, a mixture of the Romanized language of Greek and Latin and the German language. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, letters. Le the letters. What I'm talking about here are the letters. The W, the A, the T, the B, all of those alphabet, those are Greco-Roman letters. And Arabic is written in an Arabic script. There are, let's say, three or four scripts in the world. The main two are the Arabic script and the Greco-Roman script. The Greco-Roman script is used in Europe and all of its colonies and stolen countries. The Arabic script is used, for the most part, in the Khalij, what we call the, the, the Gulf, and the upper Asia, Asia, what you call true Asia, not far east Asia, which includes India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, you know, Persia. What is Persia called now? What is it called? Yeah. Iran. Okay, and all of Africa. In fact, all the African languages that, that are written are all written in Arabic script. All the Persian languages written in Arabic script with slight, you know, deviation. They might have three more letters in the Persian script, and they may write it a little bit more fancy. In African, there's five more letters added to the Arabic that are written. And that's how originally all the languages, when you do some study of history, you find all the languages in Africa. And I'm just saying that because, you know, we have a lot of African-Americans in America, you know, Muslim. And there's a lot of people think that Africa doesn't even have a script. They don't understand what Timbuktu is all about. You know? <laughs> but <laughs> just to make it clear, you, all those languages were written in Arabic script with about those five different letters up until maybe 50 years ago. Up until maybe 50 years ago, give or take 10, 20 years, okay? After independence, part of the rules for independence was that they had to go and use the Roman script, the Romanized script. So a lot of times when you hear that there's illiteracy all over the world, illiteracy here is judged by the Roman script, not on can they read their own natural scripts, okay? And the, going back to the point we're referring to here is that since we're using the Roman script to write because we read in English, and English is mainly German and the Roman languages mixed together, you know, don't worry about how it's spelled. Worry about how it sounds, okay? We don't have to agree upon the spelling. Somebody says, how do you write Hakim? Any way you like, okay? <laughs> But have an H sound in there, a K sound in there, and a long E sound in there. You might write that E sound with an I. You might write it with an I and a Y. You might write it with two E's. As long as when you say Prince Hakim, Prince Hakim's going to come. Okay? So we're not getting tripped off on the letters. The sound of this, word, this letter is called wow. Everybody say wow. 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 Do I need to teach you how to say that word? No, we used to say that before we learned subhanAllah. Right? <laughs> and after that, we stop saying, wow, we start saying, subhanAllah. Or we say, wow, subhanAllah. <laughs> so, wow is a letter in Arabic. In Olaf, it means yes. Okay? But in Arabic, wow is a letter. Wow, when the makhraj can be found. What does makhraj mean? Give me a full sentence. Okay. Makhraj means the point of articulation, right? Wawun, the makhraj can be found. This construction in language is called atful bayan. You mention something in a general format and then you get specific right after it. I saw your brother, who? Ahmed. So before he says who, you say, I saw your brother, Ahmed. The mentioning of Ahmed is called atful bayan, clarifying what you meant first. So we said wawun, what about wawun? The makhraj, okay, can be found. So we're not talking about wow can be found. We're saying, wow, the makhraj can be found. 
wherever someone's saying, ow. ow. Everybody say, ow. ow. From here, we learn and we reiterate, re reiterate the rule that if you want to load the makhraj, what is the makhraj? The makhraj is? No, the makhraj is? Okay, so whenever we want to find the makhraj of a letter, what we have to do is put an alif or a hamza before that letter, either with a fatah or a kasra, and we say al or ab or edge or az. Anytime we do that, that's where we find. Where we wind up, that's the part where we're supposed to start off in making that sound. So you want to find the makhraj of wow, you have to say ow. And the reason why he goes this route, except for besides telling you exactly where the makhraj is, like ba, he said the makhraj is where? Where's the makhraj for ba? Where's the makhraj for ba? The, ba, the makhraj for ba is? The makhraj for ba is? Off the lips, right? Okay, so he doesn't tell you exactly where this makhraj is. There's a point to that, a subtle point, because no one knows. What's the point? Everybody hesitated. It was like, look, nobody knows. <laughs> I told you there's two types of makhraj, right? There's a makhraj you can put your finger on, like ba, and there's a makhraj that is subtle, ambiguous. You can't put your finger on, like a. Ah. Put your finger on the makhraj of ba. Now put your finger on the makhraj of a. Ah. No, don't do that. You put your finger down your mouth and everything like that. You can't put your hand on it, right? Likewise, wow. wow. Say ow. See, you can't put your makhraj on it. It's one of those ambiguous makhrajs. Okay? Everybody got that point? Everybody like, ha has two sounds, ha and ha. Did you need, subhanAllah, Sheikh Mawjud Maratan Thaniya. Subhanallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Lava salam alaikum. Daniya salam alaikum. <laughs> okay, so wow, his makhraj is not exactly some place that you could put your finger on, okay? But if you want to find it, say ow, truk, truk, ow, ow. Next we say, it's always in that gang, yanmu. Now we have to stop. Stop, look, listen. Yanmu, say that. Yanmu. Sakam, this salah. Okay, I just want to know. Okay, so it's always in that gang, Yanmu. Yanmu is not a real gang. I'm calling it a gang. I'm making it a gang. I'm giving it some description here. Why? Some personality here. Because Yanmu is a, is a rule. Okay? It's a rule in the Arabic language. And the Arabic language is, there, is what we're dealing with. It starts with the letters. Yanmu is Ya, Nun, Mim, Wow. So Wow is the last letter in the gang called? And it's called Yanmu because it has Ya, Nun, Mim, Wow. What's the name of the, what's the, the members of this gang? What are the members? Ya, Nun, Mim, Wow. We can find it there, the gang Yanmu. And this gang of letters, these four letters, always do the exact same thing. That's why they're considered Yanmu. That's why they're referred to as Yanmu. You'll learn it more when you get to Tajweed. Here, what you just need to know and recognize is that it's always in. Wow is in that gang. What's the gang called? Yeah. And they make idgham before it's noon. They make, before they get, when any one of these letters get to a noon, they make yanmu. I mean, they make idgham. Astaghfirullah They make idgham. Okay? Whenever these letters, this ya, yeah, this noon, this mean, this wow, whenever they deal with another noon, they make this the rule called idram. And idram as a rule is a tajweed rule. It means dakhala shay fi shay. It's to enter something into something else. And I'm not trying to teach you tajweed here. I'm just trying to familiarize yourself with this. And the thing that you need to note, put in highlights, highlight on your paper is that while was in the gang and mu, they make idram before it's noon. Okay? Now while one is six, meaning it's the sixth letter in the, in the original traditional format, and its number is six, right? Wow is six, but he plays a game with the words right here. He says, Wow Woon is six when counting lean. Now, what he's referring to is, like I said, a dual play on the words. If you count the sifat of wow, there'll be five. There'll be six if you count lean. Now, lean is a special rule 
Lean is not a particular rule that goes with all the letters. But lean is that, what do they call it, diphthong rule that we have in English. When you have ow and a in English, this, well, English a would be a long vowel, but ow would be a diphthong. Okay, it's a, a, a combination of A and W in English. It makes the ow sound when they come together. In Arabic, this combination is similar. When you have an, a fatha, everybody say a. Ah. Yeah. That's the fatha, followed by a wow, say ow. Wow. That's called lean. What is that called? Lean. So whenever you see ow in the Quran or in Arabic writing, it means what? It, it, and the rule of that is called lean. And it's not all the time. So whenever wow is mixed with the, the fatha like that, then that and only that is called lean. So other than that, um, wow, stafrullah, no wows, no owls. Other than that, it only has five characteristics. So he says here, wow wound is six when counting lean. When you count lean, wow wound has six sifat. When it doesn't, it only has five. But not only that, the num numerical value for wow is what? Six. So it says, wow wound is six when counting lean. I hope I didn't confuse anybody. And Jahrun Wichwun's on the scene. Move it up. Their brothers Fatun Istifal and what is it? Something holding all them down. And something holding all them down. So here we have Jahrun and Rikhun. What is Jahrun? Loud. 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 What is Rikhun? Weakness. Weakness. Again, you're becoming experts in the sifat because you're dealing with them all day with every letter jahrun and rikhun is, is, is weakness and it's loudness their brothers fatun is tifal because they're all tied together here fatun is what? Open. opening your mouth, what is istifal? lowering your tongue down, having your tongue flat right? and samtun, what is samtun? restraint, so something's holding all them down meaning he's restraining them Okay, he's controlling them. Okay? So everybody say, now think about it. What is Jahrun? Why you have Jahrun when it's dealing with wow? Say, wa. We use that word all the time, wa. It means what? And, let that ever. Right? So you have to say it loud. Rikhun, because just when you say ow, say ow, what happens? You have to open your whole mouth and let it all in there, right? Then it says fetchun. Do we need to talk about why it's fetchun? Can you say wow without opening up your mouth? <laughs> you can't. Then istifal. Say ow. ow. Where's your tongue? <laughs> it's flat. flat. Okay? And then something, again, it's control. Say where? Wow. We. Wu. Wu. You're controlling that letter. You have to move that jaw. And so that's where we're finished with wow. Let's move on to the next letter unless you have some questions. Do I have any questions at this time? If there are no questions for me, I have questions for you. Somebody tell me what Zay is. Zayun is? Come on, guys. Hesitation? Zayun is the seventh sign, a mystery that rocks the mind. Okay, why don't we start with this way? We started this way because, you know, they got a lot of people who got a lot of nonsense in their head. They got the zodiac signs. They got the, the all this, this, this. If we were in a masjid, I would use a different terminology. But... They have all this nonsense in their head, even Muslims. The mystery of seven and, and all this, hey, why Allah made seven days? And, and Zayun is the seventh sign. It's the seventh letter. And the seventh letter, its numerical value is seven. But what's the science behind that? Ah, what's the, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's what people say, right? It's a mystery that rocks mine. Don't busy yourself with that, okay? Don't busy, that ain't nothing to be worried about. There ain't no mystery. It's the seventh, that's the way Allah made it. Okay? If you want to know something about Zayun, Safirun, Samtun, Istifal, Jahrun, Rikhun, even Fath. Look how many Sifat it has. It says Safirun. What is Safirun? It's that whistling. You could say Sautu Safir. You know? So it's Safirun. So Zayun is a kind of whistling sound. Okay? And we're going to wrap this up because I don't want to be too close to the Salah time. So it says, Zayun is a whistling sound. However, the whistling sound, I said every letter has something specific about it, right? The thing you have to remember about Zayun is as though it whistle, whistles, its whistle is like a buzz. Okay? In fact, we're going to get to the Makhraj by using that word. 
The literal. Zay is not a letter that anyone should have any problems pronouncing. Neither should they have with ha or well. But Zay is one of those loud letters that you hear and you utilize all the time. And you know, half the word you use. Okay? It's exactly uh, correlates to the letter Z in English. Totally. In its sifat and its utilization. Nothing new there. Okay? So it says, Safirun Samtun. Samtun is that restraint. You gotta control Z. You can't just, you just it's gotta be some control there, right? Istifal. How is your tongue? Say as. 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 Zayak, hey? Yeah, bash. Zayhal. You know? But it's a z. It's on the tongue, low and flat, right? Istifal is flat. Jahrun, it has to be loud. If you don't give any strength to these letters, these letters are considered jahrun because if you don't give them the strength, the loudness, you won't hear them. Okay? If you don't give it, it'll sound like a scene. If you don't give it the, the right amount of energy in expelling it. Rikhun, it, do we need to talk about why it's rikhun? What is rikhun? Weakness. Weakness. Do we, after learning and thinking about what rikhun means, we said rikhun means what? It spills, right? Yeah. We can't hold it. Can you hold a sound like is? No. So you start to reflect and say, hey, I know this sound has rikhun. I can hear it. Because you're getting more familiar with what rikhun or rikhaya, rikhaba is. Right? So, even fetch. Why do we say even fetch? It, it even has fetchun. You have you have to open your mouth. Okay? Now let's go through it. Now we're going to go to the actual place. So now we, deal with the, we dealt with the safat. Now we're going to deal with the makhraj bidbabt. You know what I mean? It's actual point. It's a zayus from the tip of tongue. Okay? Look at me. You make your tongue small, sharp. You make it sharp at the end. Zayun's at the tip of tongues. As they near... Did I say touch? As they near the inner gums. Okay, we're going to have some Akful Bayan again. We say the inner gums what? Incisors. Not just the inner gums, but the inner gums incisors. So we're starting to learn a little bit more about anatomy. Where are your incisors, people? Do you know what incisors are? Okay, so you have grinders and the ones in the middle that we called your buck teeth when we said del, right? Now take the tip and upper part of that thing you call gum and place it on your two buck teeth. Those are incisors. Right? So those choppers, those sharp ones, so your tongue gets sharp, it gets close to the gums, the inner gums, the inside, and then they say they buzz away. So now it's a play with words here. When he says they buzz away, he's actually taking you directly to the makhraj. Okay? Say buzz. buzz. Now think about what you're doing. You're doing exactly what he just said. You're taking the tip of your tongue and you're making it go near the inner gums incisors and he said it's going to safir on, it's going to whistle, right? But that whistle is going to sound like a what? A buzz. buzz. So here you do it again. Say the word buzz. buzz. Now think about it. Buzz. buzz. You see how you got close to the incisors and how you made that sound? Buzz. buzz. Now make sure it doesn't touch. Because a lot of people, they're lazy with it. They let it touch because in English you don't think about these things. You just talk. Here in Arabic, you have to think about it. There has to be some consciousness there. The Muslim is not ghafal. He's constantly thinking about what's going on and what he's doing. So he says, buzz. Say it. Buzz. And make sure you don't let your tongue touch. Buzz. buzz. So you control it, right? You control it. You see that something right there? That control, that restraint of getting it real close but not letting it touch, that rechawa, so it's flipping around and spilling weakly, but it's not touching. Right? So you know exactly there should be no reason why we have problem with this letter. We done? No, we're not done. So make ikhfa right after noon, right? Or right at the noon, or right at the end. Let's play again at the end. But at the end, when you get to when zay is close to an end or next to an end, what sound does it have? It has the sound of ikhfa. Ikhfa means to hide something. We used to saw some covering concealment in the military, in the Marine Corps. They said covering concealment. Concealment was that you were hidden, but you, were, you could still get shot, you know? But cover where you were behind something, and even if you got shot at, it would block it away. Ikhfa is 
cover, but it's not concealed. I mean, it's concealment, but it's not cover. So the letter is like between the bushes. You can still see him there. You can still hear it slightly, but it's, it's got some cover on it. You understand? It's like your children hiding in the closet amongst the clothes. and You can't see me, <laughs> but they're right there. So that's what you do. That's, that's what that sound, uh, that, that rule, ikhfa, is, and it's a tajweed rule. Do I have any questions? I saw you with your hand up. No. Okay. Do I have any questions at this time? I have a question. Sure. Right, lucky number seven and, you know, that crap. I'm stuff like Yes, astaghfirullah, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, jazakallah khair. His statement, just to make everybody understand, he said, so when we were talking about seven, people say the lucky number seven, and they have horseshoes, and they do zodiacs, and all these other things that we say, we see Muslims even doing. So he said, what about these people? These people, have, do they have a problem with their aqidah? Yes. Anybody who believes there's lucky number seven, or lucky number anything, you know, besides Allah is, is odd, he loves with. So we stick to the width. We deal with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he loves. You know, Allah's messenger was speaking about three. Taking three dates and doing things in three and odd numbers, five, seven, six, uh, whatever that odd number is. But to single out seven as it being a lucky number or a blessed number, we don't have any delil about that. In fact, this is from people's uh, problem with the aqidah is a good way to say it. Aqidah, jazakumullahu khair, because we're not here trying to just blow words. Aqidah means is a knot. Aqada shay, aqada shay is to make a knot. Nafathatu fil uqad. You know, people say in, in, in the Quran, when you recite the Quran, it's the first place where we find this word. And it's, they were spilling, they were drooling and slobbering on the knots when they did their magic, right? However, Allah says, um, He says, hold on to the rope of Allah. And the ulama speak about the rope of Allah, how do you hold on? You have the right aqidah, you have the right knot. To hold on to the rope. And this word aqidah is from that. And this is the, 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 uh, our belief system. Our theological belief system. How and what we believe in with regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What we say about Allah, which is we only say what Allah's messenger said about him and what Allah says about himself. And we stop where he stopped. And when we know, نفوض المعنى إلى الله. Meaning when we find words in, in the Quran that says Allah is, uh, has a hand, for example. We say Allah has a hand. And they say, well, how is his hand? And this is anthropomorphic. You're saying Allah is like man. Well, and there's nothing similar to Allah. We say Allah says he has a hand. So Allah has a hand, right? How does he have a hand? We نفوض. We take the meaning and we say, we know what hand means. We say Allah has a hand that in a manner that's befitting the majesty, the majesty of Allah. And we don't know how. Besides that, as Imam Malik said, asking Kaif and these types of things, this is innovative. We believe in what Allah said about himself, right? And we stop there. We don't make ta'til, we don't change the meaning and take it away, say no, his hand actually means his power. Because this would mean then that Allah is incompetent. You're saying that Allah meant his power, wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah. But he said, hand, you're saying Allah, the one who created everything, is incapable of saying what he means? Okay? So this is part and parcel of our aqidah. So when those types of things, like, like the people say, lucky number seven, this means they understand something incorrect in how they're supposed to believe and look at Allah. Okay? And aqidah, you have it as a mentality, and it starts off with la ilaha illallah, negating everything except for Allah. You know what I'm saying? Except what Allah has said and how Allah is supposed to be, is supposed to be understood. Okay? So, and there are keys for la ilaha illallah. And they say, what's it? Wa innahu la yanfa'a qailuha bin nutqi haythu la yastakmiluha al ilmu wal qabulu wal. Ilmu wal qabulu. I forget the rest of it. Wal isti'ana, fadri ma aqulu. And it's just basically the keys of la ilaha illallah, which is saying that, you know, Allah has to, you have to have knowledge. Knowledge precedes words and deeds, and basically that's what he's referring to here. Okay? Does that answer your question, or did I get, go off on a tantrum? Okay. Akulukal, is there any other questions?